Hey mates, it's me Riz doing a reaction on the channel and the last react video I did was the Emu War by Oversimplified so it's fitting I do another video of theirs and I'm actually really curious about um this one uh, when I typed Oversimplified it came up with a bunch of um, American uh, videos so I think it's best we start with the American Revolution by Oversimplified part 1 and you know how I do these videos, I pause it, I give my notes, or I just do a little jokes, bits and bits in here, and then if I laugh hysterically, you know, I'm definitely going to be pausing it. And also, just keep in mind, if I'm, if it's all silent when I'm pausing it, is that I'm just chuckling, but uh, the microphone can't pick it up. So with that, uh, let's go. Now let's go. Holy smokes. Christopher well, Columbus, that is no way to address the king and queen of Spain. What is wrong with you? Okay, okay, so you know how we're looking for a new trade route to I India, right? right? And the earth is round, right? Right. So I'm thinking we can just sail the <laughs> other way around the planet, right? Yeah. So I set sail, the right? Was really and loud I reach India, first. right? Right. Wrong. Right. Wrong. I did not reach India. All right, I did Columbus not. And all right, no, all right. Get to Spain the point. The did Spain. you know there's a whole nother freaking continent out there? Uh -huh. Okay, and do you think I should care about this? Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I forget to mention there's gold everywhere? Gold? Columbus <laughs> 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 That might actually be an appropriate response. <laughs> Think of that. <laughs> if it involves something with gold, diamonds, and 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 oil, that's that re that response seems appropriate. Well, maybe not, maybe not diamonds today, because it's been controlled by a monopoly. But oil and gold, well, oil mostly would be the biggest reaction. Anyway, let's continue landed in Central America in October 1492, and he had the time of his life. And by that I mean he went on a huge theft and murder spree. He stole gold, jewelry, people, and a hammock. And then he returned to show off all of his riches, including a few previously undiscovered items, such as tobacco, the pineapple, turkeys, and a hammock. Now I know what you're thinking, but oversimplified, Columbus didn't discover America, the Vikings did. Okay, this is something I'm um, always, um... There's all, this part here is always up for debate on that the Vikings discovered America, but really, if we were to think about it, um, how, by the context of when you discover something, it's on the terms that the entire world knows about it. Like, when you discover it, and then you come back and say that there's a whole entire continent. In terms of that, Christopher Columbus is the one who, who would have, say, discovered America, or at the very least, he discovered the south part of, uh, of America, and then, you know, would he continue to say that, um, who would be the, um, other people who navigated America? Actually, that'd be a really, um, good, uh, history video for someone who, you know, I'm thinking, damn it, okay, mine, it's really hot, and I'm gonna be bursting my brain out, <laughs> anyway, let's continue, but, and you'd be know. partially right, in the yeah, 11th partially. century, Leif Erikson was the Leif Ferrickson? Wait, that Spongebob scene? Happy Leif Ferrickson Day is... That's an actual Viking? Well... I learned something... Today. <laughs> the first European to land in America. But hey, if you oh, love geez. Vikings so much... Hold on. This is promo... Okay. Join my Vikings clan under of his life, Hammock. Okay, and suddenly the race was on to explore and conquer the new Okay, here we go. We got some flags. We got Spain, Spanish Empire, the Union flag before um, the Irish joined, uh, and the French and the Dutch. Oh, huh, the Dutch actually. <laughs> you know, it's weird. The Dutch are great explorers, but they don't settle that well. They don't put any, um, they just like to explore stuff, but they don't put any settlements at all, kind of. Uh, someone may prove me wrong that they settled one part of the navigation area. Anyway, let's World. continue. After a couple centuries of warring with the natives and each other, the European powers had claimed quite a lot. Also, here's something that uh, I don't know if he's going to mention this, but um, 
alongside warring each other between the natives and the other countries, also the natives were fighting with with the other empires due to mutual through through mutual benefits. Um, in hindsight, this kind of was kind of turned out really sour for the most part, but uh, the but then, but I mean, I'm pretty sure the entire all the empires couldn't take over the entire uh, country or know where it where the where everything was without the help of the locals, and it's kind of hard to um. It's kind of hard to. Uh, it's just very difficult because a lot of stuff that's happened in like the beginnings of colonization with America has a lot of echoes in the colonization of um, with Australia, and it's just a bit hard to talk about it, especially since that perhaps that um, history stuff is kind of hard to pin down because uh, it's all very grey though. I would like to or put more interesting knowledge on objective on looking at the stuff with natives objectively, but that may take all quite a bit of while to research. But just for just anyway, Lot of land, continue. including this area, which both the English and the French claimed as theirs. One day the French said, I'm going to build some forts along here. And the English were like, could you not? And the French said, sorry, but no, I could not <laughs> not. And they went ahead and built their forts, which pissed off the English. So they sent an up and coming British lieutenant colonel by the name of George Washington with a combined force of British troops and Native Americans. After a short battle, the French commander said, uh, all right, all right, we surrender. Okay, <laughs> boys, French. pack it up. They're surrendering. Oh, oh, sorry. Was I not meant to split his head open with a tomahawk? Ah. Don't worry. It's not like seven this will start war. a seven-year-long right. major global there conflict. And what happened next was a seven-year-long major global... Wait. This looks like a world war, technically. Seriously, Russia was involved? Could this technically be a Russia... Um, like, um, a huge world war? Like, it's almost... To them, it's like the a world war. Just, but... Damn. Like, I get it that some nations are just there for supplying and for, for potential just supplying other nations to war in, in America, but that's kind of a bit eye-opening. Look there, Australia is right there on the bottom right corner, and it's, I don't know if this, if it's yet to be discovered by this time. Conflict, which Great Britain won. At the peace yeah. negotiations, Spain gave up Florida, while France gave up all of its territories in North 17th. America. But Britain's victory came at a cost. A 60 million pound... <laughs> what? Hold on. Hold on. It, if this is talking about today's money, if it's talking about the actual price during the time, oh my god, the inflation... If we were to adjust it for inflation, oh my god, that is... That guy with the big eyes has every right to fucking bulge out. Jesus Christ, that is a shitload of money. I don't even think the British could fucking... Damn, that's a fucking huge debt. Man. Okay, continue. They were now broke, in a lot of debt, and had to come up with some way to Hold repay on. it. So they went to the colonies and said, Okay, listen up. So a huge part of the war was spent protecting you from the French, and now we have no money because of it. So... I'm not sure what you're uh, saying. Uh, okay. hello? So we spent a lot of money Mom? protecting you from the French, right? Sure. Right. And now we're broke. Uh, yeah. That certainly is a pickle. Listen to me. We spent all of our money protecting you, and now we need money. Can you please pay us back some money? No. No. <laughs> I knew it. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and tax you. In 1764, <laughs> Britain introduced the Sugar Act, <laughs> forcing the colonists to import sugar and molasses exclusively from the British. And okay, um, something I want to object here is that this was sort of a, this was kind of a similar case for Australia, uh, back even uh, when they were, um, back even after when there was a comp, when we started the Commonwealth thing in 1901. Involved that... Uh, Australia were to was to well export all of their meats to British uh, Empire, and sure there was a lot there was trading from um, certain neighbors like 
the export to New Zealand is kind of obvious because, you know, brother and sister relation. But there were other times when they did training with uh, other nations. Uh, usually uh, friends with you, youth, the British Empire. But uh, independent, tr huge independent training. It kind of, it's a bit unclear. But all I've been seeing this research is that a lot of meat was, a lot of meat, wool, uh, wheat and grain, a lot of it was exported to uh, the British Empire and, you know, the relative um, locations of the Empire. And, um, and it became apparent that, uh, well, and it became apparent that um, during uh, World War One, this was more apparent. Jeez, I think I've said this line like several times. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez, it, it's still hot today. I'm probably going to keep mentioning it. So let's continue with it and keep going. And to pay duties on them. Then a year later, they introduced the extremely controversial Stamp Act, and okay. it worked a little something like this. Okay. Hello, shopkeep. Hello, Mr. Bungle <laughs> Bear. Here's the deed for your new shop. <laughs> I'm just look at the. That'll be three Wait, pence, what? please. Wait, I got hello, Mr. Bungleberry. Here's the deed for your new shack. Stamp. That'll be three pence, please. Wait, what? Wait, what was that? It's the new tax. I get a stamp on any paper or documentation I make, and you have to pay for it. Would you like to see this pamphlet that explains everything? Yes, please. Okay. Stamp. Two pence, please. This is awful. You know what? Just give me a deck of cards so I can go gamble my pain away. Okay. <gasps> no. No. Don't do it. Stamp. Damn. <laughs> Obviously, the colonists were like, hey, my dudes, this new tax legislation right here, this is BS. Until now, they had enjoyed relative freedom to rule themselves. Solitary and suddenly, Britain was asserting its control. They were especially unhappy because they didn't have any representatives in the parliament Sorry, that was levying words. taxes on them. So they protested. Sorry. Orators gave fiery speeches. Patrick British Henry's were power hour. And anyone loyal to the British found themselves Team increasingly GB. harassed. The whole thing actually began to take quite a toll on British business. And after just a couple years, the British were forced to repeal the Stamp Act. King. But we still desperately need money what should we do we could try taxing the colonies great idea wait didn't we literally just try that and it failed miserably man look at me i look fabulous have you ever seen such a handsome boy no sorry georgie no way you're the handsomest smartest most popular king that ever lived and everybody likes you you're doing such a good job but your majesty wait why does oh, he have a fidget here. spinner I just, I just so in 1766, the British made a declaration saying, we okay, can do what we want because we're in charge scuppy. and you can all go Yet. suck it. Then they levied a whole bunch of new taxes on the Americans via import duties. Glass? There's a tax for that. Lead? There's a tax for that. Paper? Tea? Oil? <laughs> There's a tax for that. And once again, the Americans <laughs> oh, that... boycotted British goods, British business felt the pinch, and the British had to back down. Wait, oh. hold on. You could act... America actually boycott British goods? Wait, boycotts actually work? It's, that's kind of actually amazing. Um, and I've, you know, sorry, I'm just thinking that they've been hearing news of, um, you know, the Pokemon uh, Dexit and all those, on all the boycotts that's been happening, you know, with um, all the shit that's going on with uh, Blizzard, Activision Blizzard and the stuff with uh, Game Freak. And, um, yeah. Boycotts don't are not really that good. They don't speak that loud because people eventually buy the game, and um, no, it's kind of weird that they say that oh it's awful, but then in the end I'll just buy it. It's the thing I don't get. I mean, the thing I kind of tapped out from Pokemon, like went through the motions in Pokemon Y and then decided to quit. Oh yeah, don't have, don't have a switch. So anyway, let's continue. Right, this is ridiculous. They're my colonies, and I have to be able to assert my control. Repeal all the new taxes except for the one on tea. Also send 1,000 troops to Boston to take control. Oh, and make the colonists pay for them. And as British troops arrived, the tension in Boston oh, was sure. palpable. You could cut it with a knife, <laughs> and it was all about to come to a head. On March 5th, a band of local patriots began heckling a British guard at the customs house. More and more Americans joined in the heckling, while more British troops turned up in support of their comrade. Snowballs were thrown at the British. The snowballs turned to rocks, the rocks to oyster shells. The soldiers, outnumbered, panicked. One thing leads to another, and you can see where this is going. Five civilians were killed. The Patriot press throughout the colonies declared the Boston Massacre an unwarranted crime. Wait. Five people killed is considered a massacre? That seems like the most unmassacry massacre. But then... 
But then again, this is the press. And the unhappy Boston. Oh. Okay. Committed against the people of Boston by the cruel British, and the anger continued to grow. A British revenue schooner that ran aground in Rhode Island was burned by the locals. When it came to light that the governor of Massachusetts supported the suppression of the colonists, his house was burned by the locals. And next, the colonists would set their sights on the remaining tax on tea. On December 16th, 1773, okay. a band of patriots known as the Sons of Liberty disguised themselves as Native Americans, okay. marched down... Okay, so that's about like... Okay, 1773, so that's about 15... I think 15 years? Uh, until the discovery. So... What was it? 1788. Yeah, okay. Down to Boston Harbor, boarded a British merchant ship loaded with Wait, tea. Wait, hold on. Back up. On December 16th, 1773, a band of patriots known as the Sons of Liberty disguised <laughs> themselves as Native that. Americans uh, marched down to Boston Harbor, boarded a British uh, merchant ship loaded with tea, and in front of thousands of... That actually happened? They disguised them. Alright. Uh, just disclaimer, the... A lot of stuff that involved me learning about the American Revolution was Assassin's Creed 3. But then I realized that that actually ever since the ending I realized that something doesn't feel right on the history. But never gave it too much mind. It just felt like the whole American Revolution was just a confusing mess. But let's see. But then again this is where I'm going to see the uh, simplified version. So let's conti keep continuing. Spectators threw nearly 10,000 pounds worth of tea overboard. Not the tea. The British were. <laughs> 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 uh, I didn't knew that. I didn't know that would happen. <laughs> Oh, I can't stop laughing. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> okay, that is, um... That seems like the best... <laughs> Alright. I just quickly, um... I typed up, um... Something that, um... Uh, Boston Tea um, Party cost, like, how much it cost. It was about, like, um... 45 uh, tons of tea was thrown out, and... Inflation... According to inflation, back in you know 2009 statistic, it costed nearly one million dollars today. This is Australian money in 2009. So, and then there's a speculation in American. It's like over nearly one million seven hundred dollars or one million seven hundred bucks, which, yeah, that does speak a lot of volume on someone literally destroying a million dollars of of product Jeez. disgusted and they punished <laughs> 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 Okay, okay, I'll stop. General Assembly okay, I can't stop laughing. And sent 3,000 more troops to occupy the city. I don't know if anyone's wondering. Australia is kind of mixed when it comes to all drinking stuff. Tea, coffee, beer, any sort of um, liquor. Uh, we kind of just break it down to soft drink, then hard drink, but usually it's, um, we usually say brand names, but I, I don't know why I had that information. Let's Meaning Boston continue. and Massachusetts were now essentially under the direct rule of Great Britain. And oh boy, were the people pissed. The other colonies saw what was happening and worried they might be next. So they called a brain trust to decide what to do. 56 delegates from 12 colonies gathered and met in Philadelphia at the First Continental Congress. And the roll call read like a who's who of America's finest thinkers. Uh -huh. I'm talking lawyers extraordinaire Johnny A and Johnny J, experienced military commander George Washington, businessman and future alcoholic beverage Samuel Adams, <laughs> fiery orator Patty H, <laughs> guy who married a rich lady, Big J Dickinson. And while they weren't present at the First Congress, soon names like James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and much later Alexander Hamilton would all serve time in the Continental Congress. The question now, though, was what to do about the 
the British. After much bitter debate and disagreement, they eventually agreed on an amazing solution. They would simply ask the British to stop. Can you stop? No. It didn't work. Okay, yeah, it's then tell the local militias to start arming and be ready at a minute's notice. And across the colonies, these Minutemen stood ready for the beginning of the American Revolutionary right. War. Now having your colonies in open rebellion is one thing. Once they start arming themselves, that's when it really hits the fan. So British General Thomas yeah. Gage ordered 700 troops from Boston out into the rebel-controlled Massachusetts. Yeah, once, uh, once your colonies start arming, or when any um, political party went to any political party, once your citizens ar arm themselves, it does give a tendency to encourage to um, be a be a more servant of the people, which that is the actual uh, job for a um a ruler, be a servant of the people when it comes to well all this shit. But uh, anyway, let's see, let's get. Massachusetts countryside Wonder. to destroy stores of arms and ammunition uh, held by the rebels in Concord. The British set out in the middle of the night. Patriots, including mm. Paul Revere, rode ahead to warn that the British were coming, yes, giving the rebels time to prepare. Reserve. The two sides met in Lexington as the huh. sun began to rise. Try. They faced off against each other, and in the confusion, somebody shot first. The shot heard around the world marked the beginning of the American War of Independence. The rebels were outnumbered and had to fall back to... Alright, flag. Let's see. Okay, this flag... Here is like kind of the umbrella of flag to many um any new colonies that the British uh create and you know the Reddins originally there was a time when the, the colonies of Britain uh, had the red ensign like all of them kind of had the red ensign and then later had um more of an identity uh symbol that represents the respective colony. Uh, you can see this with the colony of India and also the colony of Australia uh, back when they were part of the British Empire. Uh, was, like, of course, with Australia, it was the Sun Cross and the uh, Commonwealth Star, though depending on which point, it ha how many points it had. It had six, then it had seven. You know. Yep. Let's continue. The Concord, as the British split up to search for rebel supplies. However, more and more Patriot rebels kept showing up, and this time it was the British who were outnumbered as more fighting kicked off in Concord. The most professional army in the world was forced to flee back to Boston at the hands of local, poorly trained militiamen. And all along the British route back to Boston, Patriot rebels continued to gather and open fire on the retreating British. When the British reached Boston, the rebel militias surrounded them. Boston and the British were now under siege as small land and naval skirmishes continued around the city. And the British would suffer another embarrassing blow. This, this is reminding me of Mountain Blade Warband, or like that um Napoleon mod, like the map. It's all the flags moving, and it's like Napoleon. Just the um Mountain Blade um open map. Just put the numbers on how many troops there are, and just it would be like a um board um I don't know board game version of it. Anyway, this time in upstate New York, Colonel Benedict Arnold concocted a plan to take the All British right. stronghold Fort Ticonderoga, this which held a large some amount kind of guns trade and ammunition. Up, he set off towards the fort exactly alone, he hoping to recruit men along the way. When oh. Just a little context. Um, to many, uh, I'd say to many Australians, we only heard this in some cartoons. Uh, the only thing I've seen this guy is, um, is known for to be some sort of traitor or turncoat. I th think it was from Recess, but... No, 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 I think it was from Recess. But anyway, let's continue. When he came across the Green Mountain Boys, led by Ethan Allen, who as it turned out, had the exact same plan he did. So they decided to work together. But I'm in charge. No, 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 you're in charge. No, I'm in charge. No, no, I'm in charge. charge. This went on for some time, until the Green Mountain Boys threatened to go home. Oh, what, no Arnold bugs, buddy? The group raided friends? the fort at night, oh. while the Redcoats were asleep. And they caught them completely by surprise, taking the fort and all of its munitions with almost He's no resistance. <laughs> wow, great job, Ethan. Very impressive. By the way, what happened to that other guy we sent to take the fort? Who? Benedict Arnold. Never heard of him. Ouch. Oh, that's... Oh, meanwhile, in England. What the 
Nobody knew what was going on. The colonies were in open rebellion, and for now, they even seemed to be winning. So King George fired General Gage, replaced him with General William Howe, and ordered the rebellion to be put down immediately. Okay, the British are definitely going to retaliate for all of this, so we should probably put together a proper army. First, we need to pick a commander-in-chief, and I think we can all agree that that job should go to the man, the myth, the legend, George Washington. My friends, I am humbled and honored that you would consider me for such an important role. I did not expect for this All right, you've been showing up in a military uniform every day for the last 10 months. We all know you wanted this, <laughs> so cut the crap, George. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Uncool. So Washington began his journey up to Boston to take command of the newly established Continental He's Army. Just as the British made their first major attempt ah. to break the siege, they made plans to take the high ground on Bunker Hill. But spies okay, warned the Continentals of the British plans, so they fortified Bunker uh, Hill and white set up lines defensive on that. positions on nearby Breed's Hill. The day of the battle came, and as the British advanced, a barrage of Continental gunfire was opened up on them. Twice they tried to climb the hill, oh, and twice they were pushed back. The battle lasted three hours until the Continentals finally ran out of ammunition and had to retreat, allowing the British to take the hill. While technically a British victory, they suffered nearly 1,000 casualties to the Continentals' 400. The colonists showed the British that this wasn't just a rebellion, it was war, and they were ready for it. A civil but war. one thing they weren't sure about was why they were fighting. While some radicals were starting to throw around the I-word, most hoped to eventually repair their relationship with Great Britain. So they sent a letter to King George saying, Hey man, looks like things aren't going your way. Remove the taxes and let's be friends. I'm gonna kick your ass. Send that to the colonies. Your majesty, your handwriting is terrible. Are you sure? Just do it. What does it say? He's gonna lick my... Gross. So for the okay, someone tell me if that is true or not. That sounds... <laughs> what in the... <laughs> you know, at some point you can't tell if this is true or not. That's the thing with, um, just like this. Sometimes there's, like, small embellishments that happen that... It, I mean, if something like this happened, you would not, um... You wouldn't... You wouldn't pass up an opportunity to put that into your video. Remainder of the year, small engagements continued to occur around the colonies. The British burned down the towns of Falmouth, Massachusetts, oh. and Norfolk, Virginia, as revenge for earlier anti-British incidents. These actions played right into the hands Breaking of Patriot news, King propaganda. George is a big Overseas, the British were earlier anti-British incidents. These actions King George is a big sugar tit. <laughs> played right into the hands of Patriot propaganda. <laughs> Overseas, the British were seen as brutes, and the French and Spanish would soon begin sending supplies to the rebel cause. Ah, anything During this to hurt time, the British. There was also minor fighting going on between Patriot and Loyalist militias in the <laughs> colonies. Benedict Arnold was still on a mission to win some personal glory for himself, so he headed up an attempt to invade Canada in a two-pronged attack. The Continentals managed to capture some British forts and the city of Montreal, but a harsh snowstorm with some smallpox on the side saw them defeated and pushed back at Quebec City, and they were forced to retreat all the way to Fort Ticonderoga. Speaking of which, remember all those guns and ammunition? Uh -huh. Well, this guy's got a plan for what to do with them. He uses Henry oxen Knox. to drag 120,000 oh pounds of uh. artillery for two months through the harsh winter, 300 miles all the way uh, to that's Washington. That's the guy named after the, army the Fort Knox. Boston. Boom. Washington's got himself some big guns, uh. which is fortunate, because up until now his army had been suffering through the cold winter, not knowing when the siege would end. Now, they could make a move. Washington wanted to launch a full assault on the city, but his junior officers felt the British were too fortified, and to his credit, Washington was great at hearing and taking on board the ideas of others. Instead, the Continentals worked through the night, setting the guns up on Dorchester Heights, overlooking the city. And when dawn broke, and the British saw the guns, they knew they were toast. Their positions were completely exposed. It was checkmate. They had no choice but to abandon the city. 120 ships carried 9,000 redcoats and 2,000 loyalists away to an unknown fate, and Washington had his first victory of the war. Washington then moved his army to New York, knowing that when the British returned, they would probably land there. In the meantime, a friendly-looking old man by the name of Thomas Paine had written and published a pamphlet called Common <laughs> Sense, in which he advocated for total independence from and Great also Britain. Advocate it for spread across the colonies like wildfire, and to this day remains the best-selling title in America. It was read aloud in taverns to and the meeting halls and brought the idea population. of independence into the mainstream. Oh, Congress that's a began cute to seriously buck? consider the idea. Dear Thomas Jefferson was selected those... to write up an official what declaration of independence, and he went hard, writing that all men are created equal, with certain inalienable rights, uh... including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Of course, Jefferson had over 100 there states, we go. but we don't have to talk about that. On the 2nd of July, Congress voted unanimously in we'll favor of that independence, too. and John Adams declared Another that the 2nd of July would go down as the most remembered day in American history. Then a couple days later, independence actually came into effect. <laughs> the United States of America was born. There was no turning back now. The Americans tore down a statue of King George in New York and melted him down into 42,000 musket bowls. To the British, it was treason. <laughs> uh, and if the king had his way, Washington and all of Congress would be hung.
Speaking of the British, guess who's back? Hello. The king sent an intimidating force of 130 Sorry. warships and 25,000 men to New York. Washington knew that taking on the most powerful military in the world wouldn't be easy. The British set up camp on Staten Island as the Americans dug into defensive positions around Wait. Brooklyn Heights, waiting for an attack to come. But the British Ish. just waited, wearing down their opponent's nerve while building their own strength. At one point, they launched a big scary artillery barrage and then said, you know, if I was you right now, I'd probably sue for peace. But Washington told them to shove it. The Americans kept holding out for what was coming. And when they finally hit, they hit hard. 15,000 British troops approached the American position, and the two sides fired on each other in massive rows. But what the Americans didn't realize was they were only fighting a decoy. The main British force was going oh. around to flank the Americans from behind, and when they arrived, they inflicted heavy casualties. The Americans panicked and retreated back to Brooklyn Heights, where they then found themselves trapped between the British army and the river. It looked as though the war was already lost, but luckily, <laughs> instead of attacking, the British decided to dig in for a siege, and then a thick fog set in, allowing Washington's army to escape across Huzzah. the river on Unimpeded. The British continued to chase and engage the Americans off Manhattan, yeah. and the Americans suffered defeat. This is Mountain after Blade War Band. After defeat. It was a disaster. Oh Washington's God, leadership that. was called into question, as thousands of American POWs were left oh, to rot as traitors. Washington's army fled through New Jersey all the way down to Pennsylvania. Rarely had an army been so badly beaten, yet survived to fight another day. Okay, here we go. Alright, that seems enough we'll get back to part two shortly but so yeah i could see how the the american revolution started um it pretty much involved in one big part with taxation without the representative from the colonies and i think there were and you know, a bit of the blame kind of it has to be shouldered to the colonies, thinking that they could not be taxed. I mean, it was the British British colony, and it, they needed to at least put some form of tax from the British to the British because of the war. I mean, the Seven Year War, but. They didn't allow anyone to represent the colonies in their parliament. So, I think this was, I think this was like, honestly, how it all was led up to it. It kind of makes sense. I mean, pr again, prior to knowledge, it involved, my knowledge of the American Revolution was from the Assassin's Creed franchise, which even while I was playing it, something felt wrong. It didn't seem like the history was correct, or at least it something just didn't click correctly. Also, they lied about some things. That next react video, which possibly part two is going to be out tomorrow, I'm hoping. So with that, thank you for watching to my reaction. Please like and subscribe. It brings a smile to my face. And all that's that I said from before. Yeah, I got nothing to say. And I hope I didn't... You know what? Forget it. That's it. The video's done. I, if I keep rambling, I'm going to screw up something. So goodbye. Bye. You're still here? Um... If you're still here, I'm just working on the CAC uh, Mustang. I just finished the script. 99% finished. Okay, I'm done.